Starfleet has a fascination with Borg technology, and it's understandable. The Borg, as malevolent as they are, pose a great threat to the Federation and every other power out there. But more than that, their technology represents over 900 years of accumulated innovations from tens of thousands of species from across the Milky Way in their encroaching territory. The Borg go after the unique innovations and biological traits found in any species they come across that they compute or add something to their collective. Once they are aware of a trait or development, well then they make their calculated moves to acquire it, adding its distinctiveness to their own. Hi, or Rick here, and today we're looking at just how Borg technology has influenced Starfleet. Understanding the danger the Borg pose is a priority for Starfleet, alongside learning from their enemies' developments. So it is that most Starfleet ships are to salvage or notify command of found Borg technology when they can, for the potential information it can uncover, and the analysis it can provide those Starfleet research and development teams. This video is going to take a look at how Starfleet has used Borg technology to evolve its own ships, starting from the first time Starfleet encountered them. Back in 2153, March the 1st, a team of researchers investigate a potential crash site in the Arctic Circle, and discover the remains of a crashed Borg sphere, as well as two preserved bodies in the ice. This debris was the surviving wreckage from the sphere that was destroyed by a time-travelling Enterprise E in 2063. The three-person science team managed to take some basic readings from the hull and the two preserved Borg drones before they regenerated and resuscitated. This information is sent back to Starfleet. They also managed to uncover a transwarp coil, but it looks like this information does not manage to make its way beyond the outpost, as soon after, the drones reactivate, assimilate the crew, and then leave in their transport for the Delta Quadrant, upgrading the ship as they go. With the Enterprise NX-01 in pursuit, the biometric data on the Borg is sent to the crew, who manage to take additional scans of the assimilated transport vessel. However, Commander Tucker was only able to even identify a handful of the modifications. The crew then managed to observe the assimilation process first-hand on a couple of the Tarkalians the Borg attacked. With no real time to properly reverse engineer this Borg tech, it becomes a race to simply counter it with the limited available resources at hand. It looks like the information that the Enterprise collected was also sent back to Starfleet, however, the information itself appears to have been classified, or at least filed away, as the limited information gathered was not enough to really learn from, considering most of the principles involved, like transwarp, were not even understood in the 22nd century. After this, the next meeting with the Borg was from the Enterprise D in 2365. Well, technically there was the USS Raven, however that ship never made it back to the Federation with any data at all considering its fate of assimilation. The Enterprise, however, managed to take a far more detailed scan and even engaged a Borg cube for a limited time, learning a great deal. While the crew was unable to contend with the Force at the time, this information would later be sent back to Starfleet Command, which would immediately begin setting up a task force under Admiral J.P. Hansen, including divisions such as the Tactical Analysis, headed by Lieutenant Commander Shelby. However, the Enterprise's encounter had left no actual technology of the Borg behind, so they only had the sensor logs to go on. This led to the project to simply develop its own countermeasures to the Borg, rather than attempt to replicate any technology. But in a way this did spur on Starfleet's development and approach, but not enough. The Battle of Wolf 359 in 2367 also resulted in very little gain from the Borg. However, the assimilation of Jean-Luc Picard and subsequent recovery and removal of those implants would have allowed extensive analysis of the biological integration process of the invasive Borg modifications. These would be logged 
and the process disseminated through Starfleet, as can be seen later when the USS Voyager is able to reverse the assimilation of multiple drones over its journey. However, some medical advances may have been made too, with the prosthetics and level of integration the Borg could manage, but that is speculation. It was the USS Voyager itself that offered the greatest insight into the Borg technology Starfleet had seen, beginning with the exploration of a damaged cube in 2373 and the unprecedented team-up against Species 8472 later that year. Extensive Borg modifications were made to the USS Voyager, and many of these were very well documented, even if the majority were removed for their invasiveness and untrustworthy nature. Over the course of its journey through Borg space, on its way home, Voyager had its cargo bay transformed into a Borg regeneration chamber, giving the crew a far better insight into the function amid the collective. The power flow systems of the ship were bolstered with Borg developments improving drive efficiency, although not all the improvements agreed with the Starfleet design and had to be removed. The general speed and efficiency of the ship's computer system was upgraded too, with Borg-created code devised by Seven of Nine, who retained 18 years of assimilated collective knowledge that she shared with the crew. A secondary hull reinforcement was performed, which improved structural integrity, allowing for traversal of fluidic space, as well as the bolstering of deflector shield regeneration rates. The deflector array was heavily modified to create a dimensional rift, and the photon torpedoes and phaser arrays were altered to be able to deliver nanoprobes on hit. Most, not all, of these modifications were less about introducing a lot of new technology and simply using Borg experience to amplify and improve Starfleet designs. Many of these improvements were added in a scaled down variety to the Delta Flyer project too. However, new technology was installed too. For example, several recovered data nodes contained valuable information that was added to Voyager's database, especially its navigational one, which is just as well. Deprived of Starfleet's stellar updates, Voyager spent much of its journey flying blind, scouting out in shuttles or bartering for maps. The information provided by this vastly travelled Borg and their assimilated knowledge base increased Voyager's knowledge of the path ahead and more. The ship was able to fabricate Borg technology to improve its sensor systems and create a whole new astrometric lab. To give you an idea of the power this lab had, the new sensor system could analyse and observe 3 billion separate stars at once, a feat that was 10 times more effective than the baseline intrepid capabilities already top of the line for Starfleet. The next biggest development that the ship stole from the Borg was a transwarp coil, which allowed for warp travel vastly exceeding Federation levels. This was installed with the aid of Borg data, but the modification proved to be incompatible with Federation tech and eventually gave out, but not before results were seen and a vast amount of information gathered. Plus, they still have the burnt out coil. By 2379, all this information was returned to Starfleet, amid the vast recordings and modifications Voyager had received over the years, giving them much to pour over. It looks like this may have restricted the intrepid class Voyager to being analysed for its technology, as by 2383, we have a new USS Voyager A in commission. Between 2387 and 2399, the Romulan Free State managed to locate a damaged Borg cube, codenamed the Artifact, and began to research it internally. They additionally allowed other researchers onto the Artifact to work and share in the results, giving many species their first prolonged look at such technology. By 2401, the USS Stargazer had been launched, the first of the Sagan class that had Borg technology built into the design from the start. Now it's a little unclear if every Sagan class had Borg tech in it, but I suspect this is the case. Amid the improvements no doubt witnessed on the Voyager, which I would not be surprised to learn became pretty much Federation standard, it appears to also have had major improvements to its communication speeds, allowing it to network with many other ships. 
It also had multiphasic shielding, however this was a development well underway from Starfleet before the Borg, but it's also probably improved. Suffice to say, the sensor and astrometric advancements would be right at home on a ship called both Sagan and Stargazer. Unfortunate then that the first thing it encountered was the Borg, which boarded saw very familiar code in the ship's systems and easily took control of the vessel. Yay, looks like Starfleet might have gotten a little too optimistic with its inclusion of Borg tech. While Borg technology can be implemented to improve upon pretty much any aspect of a ship, the addition of any physical alterations must be treated with the utmost care. In the same way assimilation nanites will convert a creature into a Borg drone, Borg tech itself is similarly vindictive. Once installed, much Borg tech will attempt to overwrite the base system, resist removal, or convert things to its use, often simply forming a beacon or something to draw the attention of the collective. Although not seen on screen, it is possible too that the technology itself can assimilate individuals, so any salvaged Borg gear needs to be quarantined, intensely studied, and neutralised before it is brought anywhere near active Federation gear. But what is for sure is that the more Starfleet understands the Borg, the less of a threat they become. Assimilation can be reversed in time. Intimate knowledge of a cube can render it vulnerable or destroyed, and the Starfleet of Wolf 359 was steamrolled in a one-sided battle by a single cube, and six years later, at the Battle of Sector 001, they destroyed one. I suspect in the 25th century, Starfleet vessels might be able to engage the Borg with fewer ships than before, thanks to the ingenuity of its officers. Early on, it looks like most of the Borg's advancements would be classified or be biological in approach, with the 22nd century Starfleet being too far behind the curve to glean much else from them. By the 24th century, Starfleet was grappling with concepts it understood, but was more focused on overcoming the technology of the enemy. Once that was in hand, well then they started to actually dissect Borg devices, and in traditional Starfleet style, the most interest they had was in the Borg's knowledge pool and sensor systems. Good thing there is no prime directive in reverse that says the Federation cannot acquire better stuff if it falls into their laps. Thanks for watching this breakdown of how the Federation used Borg tech over the years since their initial encounter. Undoubtedly these two powers have shaped each other, so who knows where the future will take the Borg. Thanks again, and until next time, I've been Rick, and goodbye. <laughs>